Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to our cosy little corner of the internet. I'm Penn and today I'll be reading chapter 5 of Turning Tide by Pretty Bean. Hope you guys enjoy and let's get right into the fic. Chapter 5, Return Home. Darza ran down the streets of Yokohama, taking every shortcut he knew, not caring whose territory he would actually walk into. In less than 20 minutes, he reached Chuya's apartment. Taking a deep breath and tr trying to get all the air back into his lungs as he began to start picking the lock on, on to Chuya's door. When he finally un got it unlocked, he gently opened the door, st he stepped into the house, then sh gently shut the door behind him. Darzai looked around the apartment looking for Chuya. Darzai found him standing next in front of a closet with a fairly small box next to him on the floor. Chibi? Darzai called out, startling the man in front of him. Chuya quickly whipped his head around. Darzai, what the hell are you, what are you, what the hell are you doing here? Chuya asked, clearly not very happy to see the man in his house. Meh, I just thought I would come see, I would come to see if Chibi had decided to finally come home, and seems like I was right, as always. Darzai said, a smirk bouncing off his face. I'm at my house, so what? And who says you could get here? Get out. Chuya crosses his arms, looking annoyed at the man bothering him. You haven't been home for around a month, Darzai mumbles, but Chuya catches it. I'm sorry, were you watching me or something, you freak? Chuya said, starting to get a bit more pissed. Well, it's an owner's responsibility to watch over their dog, isn't it? Darzai said with a smirk to cover, to cover the worry hidden behind. Chuya started side and walked away from the closet towards his kitchen. Darzai took a glance at the box he he had stood behind Chuya that had stood behind Chuya. Darzai was confused. It contained stuff he knew Chuya would never want to get rid of. Memories of his friends, the sheep, the flags. There was no way he was getting rid of these, were there? Darzai turned around and followed Chuya, leaning against the island opposite on the opposite side of Darzai. So, what the hell do you want? Chuya said, starting to glare at them, starting to glare at Darzai. I prefer if you wouldn't be in my house. Darzai smiles. Like I said, I'm checking on my dog. What you packing for? Darzai, Darzai glanced over to the box again before looking towards Chuya. None of your fucking business. Chuya mumbles, wishing the man would just leave. Oh come on, Chibi, just tell me. Darzai said, starting to be annoying in order to get under Chuya's skin. Ugh, if it'll make you shut up, I'm moving the stuff. Chuya huffed, looking away from the man. Oh, but it's important the stuff, isn't it? Darzai said, leaning closer to Chuya. Shut up, Darzai. Stop acting like you actually give a fuck for once. Chuya yelled, his glare increasing. He stared down the man. Darzai sl sl slightly reached out his hand, grabbing Chuya's. Chuya jumped slightly, confusing Darzai. Chuya had never been this jumpy before. I do care, Chuya. Darzai whispered, looking into Chuya's eyes softly. Don't lie to me, Darzai. Chuya spoke, looking down and away from Darzai. I'm not, Chuya. So please, tell me what's going on. Darzai spoke gently, rubbing Chuya's hand lightly. Chuya looks back up at Darzai, his eyes glossed with tears but not yet crying. Chuya has a choice to make. He knows what will happen if he lets Darzai know, but if he told Darzai, his partner, the man he trusted more than anything, he would help him. He could free him. But Chuya didn't, couldn't make himself tell him the truth. Chuya just looked in the eyes of his ex-partner as tear began beginning to fall down his face. Chuya, Darzai softly called out, unused to seeing his partner looking like that. Chuya looked back down and to the island. Chuya took a deep breath. I can't tell you. I can't. You wouldn't understand. You don't understand. Chuya barely spoke above a whisper, more tears beginning to fall down his face. Darzai moved around the island, now standing beside Chuya. If you can't tell me, that's fine. Just at least let me know if there's something I can do, if there's anything I can do to help. Does I said, reaching to, to wrap his arms around Chuya. They stood there for a few minutes. 
Chia taking deep breaths, trying to contain everything that's going on. After a few minutes, Chia let out a sigh. Help me pack up some of my stuff, will ya? Help me pack up some of my stuff? Darzai nodded, following Chia back over to the closet. So, do you have more boxes, or just that one? Darzai said, looking around and not seeing any other boxes in the apartment. Uh, just the one, Chia said, crouching down and looking through the box to see what he might be missing. Darzai thought it was strange. If he was moving stuff, then why did he only bring one box? And why was it so small? Like, someone was constricting the amount of stuff he could bring. Ah, crap, where do I put it? Chia mumbled, backing away from the box and looking back towards the closet. What you looking for? Darzai asked, standing behind Chia, peering over his head. Just a book the flags gave me. It's stupid, but I want to keep it. Chia said, mumbling at the end. Want to be on the bookshelf with all your other... With all your other books you probably haven't le- read? Darzai said, slightly backing away so Chuya had room to move. Shit, so this is why, see, this is why you're useful. Chuya said, getting up and walking towards his bookshelf. Chuya's eyes scanned through the, bo- through the books. Once his eyes landed on, the wi- on, the- on it, he reached up to grab it. Wow, that's one crappy looking book. Darzai said, looking over to the beat up book in Chuya's hands. Whatever. Chia said, rolling his eyes back as he headed towards the box. As he headed, yeah, placing it, the book into it den- gently. What about your poetry books? Darzai said, grabbing one off the shelf and looking towards Chia. If I have room for them, sure, but I don't think there's, but I think there's still a few more things I need to put in here. Chia said, going to into the closet to look for more things. Darzai walked back over, stopping in front of Chia's bedroom door. The door was sitting open. Chia's desk, which had usually been covered in papers during Darzai's time in the Mafia, was completely empty. Many of the objects in Chia's house had begun to collect a large amount of dusk. Stop being a clean freak slug? Darzai said, his hands slipping into his pockets. Chia, holding a, a, a small box in his hand, came out of the closet, gent- placing it gently into the box. Excuse me? Chia said, giving a slight glare to Darzai. Well, everything's so dusty. It's really unlike the slimy slug. Darzai said with a grin on his face. God, do you ever will you ever learn to shut up? Chia rolled his eyes, looking towards his box. You got everything? Darzai said asked, looking over at the box as well. Yeah, I had most of it packed before you came, Chia shrugged. Do you want any of your books? Darzai asked, already starting to walk towards the bookshelf, expecting Chia to say yes. No, I think I'm good, Chia said, almost sounding sad at the idea of leaving his poetry behind. You sure? Darzai asked. It's It's important to you, is it not? Darzai was more confused than anything. Chia had a big love of reading and writing poetry, but then again, Chia never did tell him the real reason why he was packing. Yeah, I'll be fine without them. Chia mumbled at the end, clearly wish, clearly wishing he could take it with him. Do you want me to take them? I can hold on to them. Darzai asked, genuinely worried about Chia, but also hoping he would reveal more. And ruin them? As if. Plus, it's not like I'm getting rid of the apartment or anything. I just can't stay here anymore. Chia replied, mumbling the last part of his sentence. Darzai took a second to think. Why wouldn't he be able to stay at his apartment? Sure, he was the new boss of the Mafia and that would put a target on his back. But Chia wasn't weak. He could easily protect himself. Gasp. You, do you not trust me? Darzai said, whipping around whipping away and pretending to shed a tear pretending to wiping away a pretend tear at, from his eye a hand over his heart oh shut up Chia said gl- standing up and facing Jar's eye don't make yourself useful and grab the packing tape Chia rolled his eyes as Jar's eye waltzed his way in, over to the kitchen and grab and grabbing the packing tape 
Once Starzai had returned with the packing tape, he handed it over to Tria. There, dog. God, make, God, making, God, making your owner do all the hard work? What a terrible dog, really. Darzai laughs, laughed, causing Chia to give him a slight kick to the knee. Chia crouched back down towards the box, shutting it and taping it over. He stood up and was about to grab the box when Darzai asked him a question that made him stop. So, what happened to Mori? Darzai asked, looking at Chia but not with a glare, not wanting to scare the man away. Why does it matter to you? It's not like you're in the mafia anymore, Chia said, crossing his arms. Cause the Chibi killing Mori? Unlikely. So tell me, what was it? Darzai said, starting to get a bit more forceful. Ugh, if you have to know, he was poisoned. Chia sighed out, looking towards the box on the floor rather than Darzai. Yeah, yeah, what kind? Mori's a skilled doctor, as much as I hate to admit it, Darzai said getting closer to the Chia. Before he was about to speak, just as he was about to speak, he got cut off by his by Chia's phone ringing. Shit, Chia said before finish, before fishing his phone out of his pocket, flashing Darzai the, a middle finger and or a warning to be quiet. Darzai listened, standing there quietly, but he couldn't hear what was on the other line. Chia. You've been gone an awfully long time. Did something happen? The person on the other line said, Yeah, I couldn't find what I was looking for. I'll be back soon. Chia said, glancing towards Darzai to making sure making sure he stayed quiet. Make it ten minutes, max, the voice said. Got it, Chia said, hanging up the phone, sliding it back into his pocket. So, who was it? Darzai asked, curious, curious about the tone Chia held while talking to them. Uh, Octagawa said there was something going on, so I have to go. Da- Chia said, reaching down towards the box. Better not trash my house, mackerel. Chia yelled, walking out of the apartment, bef- w- 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 out of his apartment, box in hand. Chia- Darzai stood there for wa- for once confused about what in the world was going on. He looked through the closet, finding a big, a box big enough for. Ex- for exactly what he needed. He walked over to the bookshelf and grabbed the poetry he knew were Chuya's favourites. Even if he, even though he said he didn't want them, Darzai knew his partner better than that. Darzai taped up the box, sitting it down on the island in the kitchen. This time, not focused on Chuya, he noticed that wine, that Chuya's wine cabinet was covered in way more dust than Darzai had ever seen. Weirdly enough, compared to some other things in the house, it looked slightly less dusty. Darzai opened the cabinet, looking for anything inside. He wasn't really expecting anything, but something caught his eye. A pressed between two bottles of wine was a piece of paper. Darzai grabbed the piece of paper before slowly opening it. When he saw he, who he was for, who, who it was from, he froze. Hello, Darzai. As you know, your dear Chuya is the new boss of the Port Mafia. If you wish for, Chuya, for your Chuya to stay safe, keep the agency's ha- dirty hands away from the Mafia. Your favourite person, Mori. Darzai almost dropped the letter on the floor, but he quickly composed himself. Quickly grabbing the letter in his pocket, putting the letter in his pocket, he shut the cabinet. Grabbing the box as he left the apartment. Darzai quickly left the area, this time making sure to avoid any Port Mafia territory. Darzai decided that now he should head home. The work day is almost over anyways, plus it will give him some time to think about what he should do next. Should he tell the president that they need to drop this? Does he go against the letter and do something anyways? How would Mori know if the agency did anything? And most importantly, what was wrong with Chuya? Darzai didn't have the answer to any of this and he wasn't sure if anyone did. Hey guys, I know I haven't been active in a few days, so sorry about that. Just life getting to me and stuff, but anyway, uh, hope you guys enjoy yourself. I'm just recording this real quick because I have a birthday party to go to after school, not after school, it's Saturday. I'm an idiot. I have a birthday party to go to in a few hours, so I'm going to try to get a few videos out. Hopefully I get another video or two out before 
it's time, but it's only 2.30 and we have to leave at 5.30, so for three more hours. I should be able to get at least two more videos done. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later. Make sure to take care of yourself. Bye.